In this video, we will be exploring three different ways we can capture screenshots in QuickTime. So let's start by coming up to File in the menu bar and from the drop down menu selecting New Screen Recording. Depending on how your QuickTime is set up, your cursor may have turned into a small camera icon. If you scroll to this toolbar here, it will turn back into an arrow again. If you decide to click your mouse button for some reason before you make it here, it might take a snapshot or start video recording your screen. So as a demonstration, I will click my screen now to show you what might happen. It may look as if nothing has happened, but if you look on my menu bar, this is the stop recording button for QuickTime. So when I push it, the recording stops and a video preview pops up. If I press play, you can see what I just recorded. So let's get rid of this window by hitting the red cross. And as you can see on my desktop, a saved version of this video has been created. So let's delete that by holding down the control key while clicking the file. And from the drop down menu, selecting move to bin. Now we've got rid of that, let's have another go at screen capturing. By first reopening QuickTime here, and then coming back up to file in the menu bar. And from the drop down menu, selecting new screen recording. And without clicking anything else, there's one last thing I recommend doing, and that's going into options here. As you saw before, when I finished recording my screen, the video automatically opened in QuickTime. It would have been preview for still images. A much quicker way for me to save my files is to select desktop here in the save to section, so that whenever I capture something, it will automatically be saved to my desktop and I can rename and locate it whenever I choose. So now that we've got the prep done, let's select our first tool, which is capture entire screen. As you may have guessed, this feature takes a snapshot of your entire screen and its contents. Once I have it selected, there are two ways to use this. The first way is by moving the cursor out of the toolbar area, and when the arrow becomes a camera icon, simply click the mouse button. And the second way is to push the capture button here, like this. On my desktop, a still image has just been created, and if I double click it, you can see the snapshot of my entire screen we just took. The next tool we have is Capture Selected Window. This feature will snapshot any open window or document on your desktop. Once I have it selected, if I drag my cursor off the toolbar, it turns into the camera icon again, but it also creates a blue glow over any window it passes over, including the desktop. This is to identify which window it would be taking a snapshot of. I have two windows open here, and I'm going to hover my cursor over this window that's slightly behind this other one. Unlike a conventional screenshot, when I click and take a snapshot of this window, the window in front won't obscure my image. So let's open the new image that's just been created on my desktop by double clicking it. As you can see, the snapshot is of that single window without anything else obscuring it or being included. This is a very handy feature if like me you tend to have a lot of windows and documents open at the same time. The third and last tool is Capture Selected Portion. This feature allows you to designate an isolated part of your screen to capture. Before using this tool, let's go into options one last time. I recommend selecting remember my last selection, as if you need to repeat any capture selected portion processes, this will save you a lot of time. When this tool is selected, your cursor will be replaced with a crosshair. To select your snapshot, simply hold down your mouse button and drag out a box like this until the image you want is completely inside of it, and then release. Don't worry if your box isn't perfect, you can reposition it by moving your cursor over your selection until it becomes a hand. Then hold down your mouse button and move the box to where you want it. If you wish to adjust the dimensions, you can by holding down these handles with your mouse button and dragging the walls to where you want them. When you're happy, simply push capture here. If we now go and open the new image that's just been created on my desktop by double clicking it, you can see that this is a snapshot of the selected portion. So, if I now close this preview window, reopen QuickTime and activate this feature again by using the shortcut of holding down the control and command key while hitting the letter N, you can see that my same selection has been recalled. To finish off, if you ever change your mind mid-project and want to get out of this feature, you can simply press escape on your keyboard or hit this cross button here. And as you can see, QuickTime is still open but the toolbar is gone and your cursor is back. So, that was how to use the screen capture feature for creating still snapshots in QuickTime. 
Head over to the next tutorial where I'll show you how to create video snapshots in QuickTime.